What's good for all? Now, we all know Ken Carson, right? Arguably one of the most prominent upcoming figures in the rap scene in the last, I don't know, what could you say, two years? This nigga has went from being a more minuscule underground artist to growing to the mainstream heights of success that a lot of people didn't even think he would ever accomplish, but I mean, he's done it. And well, today, we're gonna be talking about the entire history of Ken Carson, all right? How this nigga went from underground artist who was making good music to mainstream artist who's selling 50K first week on his debut mainstream project. We're gonna be talking about the entire history of Ken Carson from the origin of Ken Carson from his birth to the rise of Ken Carson in the music industry. So buckle up for L, all right? Sub up if y'all are new here. We're about to be getting into the entire history of Ken Carson, all right? Or Kenyatta Lee Frazier if you want to get tech. <laughs> That's dead ass a foot skip ball in Jersey, bro. Don't now, Ken Carson is 23 years old, all right? And he was born on April 11th in 2000, all right? So, ironically enough, at the time of me recording this, his birthday is tomorrow. So, happy birthday, Ken Carson, all right? If you're watching this nigga, happy birthday. Ken Carson pretty much had a normal upbringing from what we've been able to decipher from interviews of him talking about it since there's not much public information on his upbringing. He was a pretty normal kid. I mean, especially for his age at the time. You know, he said he watched WWE a lot. He loved comic books and anime, of course, like anybody else would. And he watched the boondocks apparently it was one of those shows he really liked and you can hear a lot of WWE references in his songs and you know things about anime and other things like that You could also see the comic books and his current art and the things we recognize him for now Especially with the whole teen X logo in itself now Of course when you know you take things from your childhood and apply it to your music career as you get older and things that you may Endeavor in it just hits a lot harder You know it feels even more special now the beginning of the roots for Ken Carson when it comes to music was when his mom Introduced him to future she had introduced him to the first early dirty sprite mixtapes and things of that nature and that completely changed his mind when it came to music he said his inspirations were like soldier boy future it had opened his mind to music and rap at the time and what was really capable with rap after that he really started to get into music from Lil Wayne and you know really OGs at the time and some of the legends of rap and like I said that really shaped him you know that really gave him that ear for rap and what he may have wanted to try to start doing and that's trying out music you know playing instruments at a young age and really getting into music but just like any other kid there's always the creative side of a kid and a side of a kid who's just he doesn't give a fuck all right and that's the side of ken carson which started to get him in trouble at home because he would get into fights at school at the age of 10 years old he'd be fighting with people arguing and doing kid shit all right and it got so bad to a point where he even fought his teacher at 10 years old pretty much went full haymaker mode start throwing them bitches and i'm gonna play a clip of him talking about that oh, i slapped my teacher when i was 10 <laughs> I slapped my teacher when I was 10. That's probably the most exciting thing I did when I was 10 years old. I was like, I was like, come here, I gotta tell you something. Man, and I got in trouble for that. I got crazy whooping for that. Pretty much at this point, Ken Carson had realized like, bro, I don't really fuck with the school aspect of school. I just want to be here to socialize. And he started socializing and, you know, forming his group around middle school and understanding, okay, these are the people I want to hang around. These are the people I want to be around. And then, you know, he ended up getting introduced along that way of finding out friends and meeting people to Lil 88, which we're going to get into later into this video. But Ken Carson just really started to find himself as he got older and progressed in the levels of school. And the nonchalant, I don't give a fuck attitude of not wanting to go to school didn't change throughout his entire years of school. He really didn't care. There would get to points where he would skip school to do things with his friends that involved music, you know, getting out there and getting in the whole music scene. Now, with Ken Carson knowing Lil 88 from such a young age, he would be around music all the time. He'd be in the studio with a lot of rappers, which swings us into the era of the rise of Ken Carson, all right? We gonna talk about where his career really started and it really started in 2015 when he got around tm88 now if you don't know tm88 this is a huge ass producer my nigga he produced exo tour life arguably one of the biggest songs to ever come out the motherfucking soundcloud era or the era when cardi and uzi were first coming up all the other niggas that were really involved in the scene at the time one of the biggest songs to this day to ever drop and yeah that's who tm88 is now ken carson before opium and before cardi was tapped in with everybody in atlanta scene you'd see this nigga pop in and be at studio sessions with like future and all these other niggas and and if you don't know the Atlanta scene, nigga, if you know one person, then that person knows this person, and that person knows this person, so it's kind of like a chain. Everybody knows everybody, so if you tapped in with this dude, you're probably gonna be tapped in with the next thing. Now, although Ken joined 808 Mafia in 2015, he only started really releasing music in 2017, and most of those songs have since been deleted because his girlfriend had ended up, I think, taking his SoundCloud account or hacking it and deleting that shit, deleting everything that nigga posted, so there's very few archives of Ken Carson's music from this time, but according to people who were actually there and saw his SoundCloud, 
SoundCloud before it got deleted. They were good for the time, but obviously nowhere near the nigga's quality now. Now, as we all know, in 2019, that nigga Ken Carson got found by Playboy Cardi, all right? King Vamp, the motherfucking gay vampire we all know and love, he discovered Ken Carson, all right? And well, he ended up getting signed to Opium, all right? And well, obviously, that's where we are now. He's in the Opium era still. He's still signed to Opium. I don't know if he gonna be signed for fucking ever. But yeah, he got signed in 2019. Now, in 2019, Ken Carson dropped Boy Barbie. Now, a lot of people like Boy Barbie and a lot of people don't. Personally, I think it's got a few good songs. Now, Boy Barbie dropped May 12th, 2020. And well, like I said, this is some of the most hated on stuff he's ever dropped besides X, I'll say. Obviously, because it's early on and it don't reflect what he currently does. But I mean, yeah, niggas just didn't like. Now, at this point in time, people still didn't really know about Ken Carson. When Boy Barbie dropped, that nigga was still just a myth in the opium lore, all right? Niggas didn't really give a fuck about him. But that all changed on August 14th when this nigga dropped Yale, all right? Everybody fucking completely went nuts when this nigga came on the scene. I'm not gonna lie. Them rage beats absolutely changed the sound of everything when opium started really introducing it in the underground. Yale was like the first real song in the underground to really incorporate the sound that is still popular to this day. Yale took this shit to a whole nother level. I'm not glazing, nigga. I just gotta be real. Now, like I said, when Yale dropped, people really started wondering, okay, who is this nigga? What is opium? Because at this time, I remember people like Baba Lamb making videos on what opium is and what the fuck does it mean? And everybody was confused because like I said, Cardi just started signing these random people and you start seeing random niggas pop up and it didn't really make no sense. So when Yale dropped, shit really started to, you know, form into what it really needed to be. And that really started giving Ken Carson that name. Now we fast forward to July 23rd, 2021. And well, we got Project X, which is still to this day, one of Ken's most beloved albums ever. And some niggas still say it's their favorite Ken album. And honestly, it's still a fucking insane album that I go back and listen to my nigga. When my black ass is in the car on a long ass car ride or some shit, nigga, you best believe I'm turning that shit on because it just got a vibe to it. If you were there during the 2021 underground, which I'm pretty sure most of y'all niggas were, you just understand how good Project X was. No misses. I don't give a fuck what nobody says, bro. Call me a glazer. I guess I'm glazing, nigga, because I just love the fucking project. This really was a turning point for Ken because it proved that he can make good albums. It proved that he could drop a body of work that was good and not just drop singles, which is a big part about being an artist because you don't just want to be that nigga who can drop good singles and not produce a good body of work. That's an album. So when this dropped, niggas really started to see what Ken Carson could actually be. This is really when the potential for this nigga started being talked about. Now, the next album after this which was x was honestly one of the still to this day most debated albums ken carson has ever dropped nigga now x dropped july 8th 2022 and people were just absolutely divided when this shit dropped you know how many niggas were on twitter saying yo this shit mid this shit ass yo this shit is garbage i don't really like it and to this day people say it's his worst project but i don't agree with that personally i think it was obviously some songs that were underwhelming but i think it was some very very memorable songs on that motherfucker but that's besides the point bro because when this album came out it really started to like show what Ken was starting to slowly form into and what would end up taking him to that point where he is now. You could see some of the early signs of a great chaos style music being put in this album. Niggas didn't really like it at the time because it obviously isn't as good as it is now. It wasn't formed to its peak, but I mean, it was some signs of it. And when this album dropped, like I said, people were just mad confused about it. But Ken definitely gained popularity when he dropped this album. His name just started getting put out there more. Now, at this time, the comparisons of him and Lone were at its peak because around this time, Lone had also also dropped no stylus. So people were saying that Lone had the potential to be bigger than this nigga Ken. They were saying that Ken was out of there. There was a discussion that Lone was better than Ken at some point. Obviously looking at that now, nigga, I'm cool off those. I don't want to hear none of that. Cause Lone has been dropping some ass as of late. I've been hearing snippets that ain't been pleasing my ears. This was a mass discussion at the time and X really started creating that divide of whether or not Ken would be bigger than Lone or if Lone would be bigger than Ken or who was better and who was not. Now I could talk about extended, but nigga, that's just an extended version of X like I said so it's no point so we just gonna get into where this nigga is now and how he's genuinely become damn near mainstream I'ma say mainstream nigga cause he is some of my friends don't even like Cardi and them niggas just enjoy Ken's and them niggas have mainstream ears bro they only like mainstream rap so that's how I know this nigga Ken is mainstream now bro and I mean they got 7 million monthly so I don't think that's underground but a great chaos dropped and this is really when Ken started to rock but October 13th 2023 man is when this shit changed bro when Ken Carson's entire career trajectory just shot up to the fucking roof, dude. When the discussion if him and Lone were still in competition was still happening, a great chaos dropped and changed all that, nigga. A great chaos was overall, in my opinion, a crazy ass album. Nigga. It's got some great ass replay value. When this shit dropped, bro, everybody and their mama was listening to this shit. It was teased for I don't know how long, bro. It was delayed for months. It was supposed to drop, I believe, 2022, right? Or early 2023. And when it finally dropped, you best believe niggas were hype over this shit. It damn near, I think it outsold Offset's album, if I'm not mistaken. 
naked, which is crazy from an artist who was considered underground to do on his real first mainstream release. Shit was crazy, bro. When this shit dropped, it changed everything. Now niggas are currently talking about if Ken will surpass Cardi, which in my opinion, I think that nigga has the potential to pass Cardi in the mainstream. Say I'm stupid, but I'm just being realistic. There's mainstream niggas who don't listen to Cardi, who listen to Ken Carson. Ken Carson's music just has an appeal that a mainstream listener would probably listen to over Cardi. Just because I guess Ken's music is a little easier to digest than Cardi, the nigga doesn't have outlandish style that's a little crazy. His beats and his cadence could really be listened to from a normal NPC nigga walking down the street. While Cardi's music is kind of hard for a normal day-to-day -day nigga to listen to. And I love Cardi, but I gotta keep it real. This nigga Ken Carson is just completely shot up to the mainstream at this point. It's like, bro, there's all type of shit that this nigga is involved in that you really don't see for an underground artist. Like, he went to this basketball game and he was literally on the fucking big screen. Like, rapper, Ken Carson, like, and this is at a fucking NBA game, right? <laughs> An underground artist that goes to a fucking NBA game, you really think if Summers or Can Can goes to a fucking game that he's gonna be on that they're gonna be on the big screen. I mean, maybe in some other world, but I just don't think they're that big yet. But they're considered big in the underground though. Once again, we gotta learn when the underground isn't underground anymore. Like honestly, like I said, I wouldn't even consider Lone to be underground. I think that nigga's a little more mainstream esque too. He is underground still, I'd say. He's like a pubic hair away from becoming mainstream. If he drops another good project, he will a hundred percent shoot up to the top it's even hard to consider loan underground when he sold 30k first week on if looks could kill that's insane for an underground artist honestly i really do think ken will get big i think he will get extremely huge i think he'll get so big to the point where it's kind of going to be complicated for him to be signed to cardi as a huge artist himself i think when you get so big as an artist and you're signed to another artist it kind of causes complications maybe it won't in this case but i really do think that nigga ken has the potential to go fucking insane like i said he just has mainstream appeal that a lot of other artists artist in opium don't have and i mean this nigga literally has a whole challenge for jennifer's body people be trying to recreate it niggas be typing dialing numbers in they phone trying to make it sound like the intro of jennifer's body like i said that shit just crazy bro i really do see that nigga taking over uh it's actually kind of crazy how he's taken over already this quick with one fucking drop with this one album of great chaos that shit's crazy how i just shot to the mainstream and all these niggas are just hearing about it i think even wiz khalifa was talking about how honestly he enjoys ken carson's music which is fucking crazy dude ken carson's hard i fuck with ken carson I guy. I actually met him at uh, I think it was Lollapalooza mm -hmm. in Chicago, and he was chilling with Cardi. But I walked up to him. I was like, "Yo, you hard fool." <laughs> yeah. I fuck with him. I like that sound. Ken Carson has just been on a continuous upward spiral. He's now about to drop more chaos, which is a deluxe to a great chaos since it did so well. He's about to drop that in the next coming days, I believe. Already released a cover art for the lead single, and you know I just can't wait to see where Ken takes his career in the future and how he keeps evolving. But yeah, this is the entire history of Ken Carson.